Hello Hornets, and welcome to the new year here on Hornet Nation. I'm Cody Stedman. And I'm Nick Roman. This week, we cover Gabe Lindemann in an episode of Player Profile, and inside the game on ice hockey, and give you a preview of the newest edition of Talk of the Town. All of this and more on this January 10th edition of Hornet Nation. Starting things off, senior Gabe Lindemann is making a name for himself as a cheerleader. Kate Rosso brings us more about this fascinating athlete. Hello, I'm Kate Rosso, and today I'm here with Gabe Lindemann in this edition of Player Profile. On November 21st of this year, Gabe signed on to Davenport College for cheerleading. I got a chance to sit down with him and learn a few things about his experience as a male cheerleader so far, where it started, and where it is going. I saw Callahan post a story um, saying interest in comp cheer, and I looked and I was like, wow, I'd like to cheer, that'd be fun. I like screaming and I like throwing right, people, so right. might as well. <laughs> lifts are one of my favorite parts. Honestly, I like throwing people. I've been in Varsity Blues, which is a show choir, and lifts are one of my favorite parts of every routine that we do. I always did musical theater, so mm -hmm. Cheering for me was so similar. So you have recently signed on to Davenport College. Talk to me a little bit about that process and why you chose this college. It kind of started with what colleges would I would actually give me scholarship money, which is very few for cheer, as you can imagine. I went to a bunch of different recruitment camps. I went to specifically champion cheerleading, held one in Brighton mm -hmm. in October. As a male high school cheerleader in Michigan, Gabe has a unique experience. Per MHSAA and Title IX guidelines, men can't compete in cheer. I think it should be co-ed. I think everybody deserves those opportunities. Right. And mostly, every college you can go to, there's co-ed cheer. Obviously, it hurts the girls, I would say, because learning to stunt with like just partner stunting or co-ed yeah. stunting rather than all-girl stunting is a whole different type of flying. It makes a big switch for them. It makes a, college. a big switch. Mm -hmm. Clearly, Gabe cares about his Celine team, so I was curious what he will miss most when he leaves. Every single coach here has helped me learn everything that I know about cheer. Just since I started cheering for the first time in April, being able to be committed to a college and being able to cheer through that while I'm getting a degree is really awesome. Reporting for Hornet Nation, I'm Kate Rosso. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Kate. Make sure to show up to support Gabe and the rest of the cheerleaders at their next competition tomorrow night. Starts at 6 p.m. at Lincoln High School. Next up, one of the most popular sports in the United States is ice hockey. But how many people know the details of this interesting sport? Peyton Whitaker gives us a closer look in this week's edition of Inside the Game. When you think of winter sports, what do you think of? Maybe you thought of hockey. But how many people know the ins and outs of ice hockey? Yeah, hockey is, uh, it's flowing, it's intensity. Hockey as a sport dates back centuries to the 1800s in Canada. In 1903, the first professional hockey team was formed. The birthplace of actually professional hockey though is in the state of Michigan. It's up north in the UP in the town called Houghton. In hockey, as opposed to the other sports, each coach is allowed to call one timeout per game, which they can use in a variety of ways. You could take that for a number of different reasons, whether uh, if you have a group on the ice that's a little bit tired and you know you want them fresh for, you know, for instance, a power play or penalty kill, um, you know, you might call that timeout. If you are uh, down by a goal or two and you want to draw up a certain play, um, that's when you might call your timeout. If a hockey game is tied at the end of the regulation, they go into a sudden death overtime period where the first team to score wins the game. We play eight minute overtimes. Uh, so this year we've been a part of two overtime games and there, there might be certain scenarios where 
A rink doesn't have the time set aside for the overtime, so uh, a team will do a shootout instead. Reporting for Hornet Nation, I'm Peyton Whitaker. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Peyton. If you want to see our hockey teams in action, the boys play tomorrow at 5 o'clock at the Ann Arbor Ice Cube, and the girls play tomorrow at 5.30 at the Kensington Valley Ice House. And finally, this week on Talk of the Town, we feature the captain of the Celine bowling team, Phil Narumi. Ryoga Hickson sits down with Phil to dive into his journey in bowling. So um, the Celine High School bowling team is really fun because it's maybe not necessarily competitive, but it's just another way to get to know new people. There's plenty of people on the team that can help each other, and that's just how we grow. Do you have any, like, certain inspirations, like people who inspire you, like, to bowl? Like, do you look up to any certain famous bowlers, or? Absolutely. Um, I, I watch professional bowling on television, you know, a lot of research on the internet, of course, and reading a lot of books about it. And uh, that's been a biggest ins inspiration, in my opinion. Thanks, Ryoga. Be sure to check out the extended version of the podcast under the Talk of the Town playlist on the Celine Video YouTube channel. If you have a cool story you'd like to share, come see us in room C244. That's all for this show. Tune in next time on January 24th for another episode of Hornet Nation. Be sure to follow us on YouTube and Instagram for the latest show updates at Celine Video. Have, have a great, great day, Hornets. Hornets.